Hello there, my fellow squabbling bureaucrats, and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k Lore. This time, it is the fifth and final part in our War of the Beast storyline. This episode might actually end up a bit longer than usual, because there are several events left to be covered. Also, I didn't want to make a sixth episode, which would have probably been under length anyway. Last time, we pretty much ended up on a bomber, with Chapter Master Kurland dead, and the so-called Beast, which proved to be one of multiple such creatures, was still alive. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see how the story ends, shall we? Following the tragic death of Kurland during the Second Battle of Ulanor, the High Lords of Terra remained indecisive on what the best course of action should be. Shortly after the events on Ulanor, the core fleet of the Segmentum Solar were subjected to a fresh wave of attacks, carried out by the seemingly never-ending tide of the Orcs. Paralyzed by the lack of clear and concise orders, the majority of Battlefleet Solar was utterly devastated, again, by an Orc fleet of Space Hulks. During this new wave of attacks, Ecclesiarch Mesring was fortunately killed during the Orc's onslaught. Just before dying, unfortunately, the half-mad Ecclesiarch raved in a nearly incomprehensible astropathic message, that nearby worlds should throw open their gates to the forces of the beast. Tragically, because dogma, several cardinal worlds made the final mistake of complying with this command, so you can guess what happened to them. During this time, the Space Wolves followed the primal urge to return to their homeworld of Fenris, while the Ultramarines and their fellow successors became bogged down in the defense of key regions of the Ultima Segmentum. While the Orcs continued to rage unopposed on many worlds of the Imperium, the Fist Exemplar Chapter Master, Maximus Fane, came to the decision to take action against the Greenskin threat. Unlike Corland and Primarch Vulcan, though, the Chapter Master had no intention of attempting to work with the ineffective High Lords of Terra. Instead, he began gathering key competent individuals to form an inner circle of trusted advisors. Allying himself with Grandmaster Draken Vangarich and Fabricator General Kubik, Thane and his co-conspirators began to secretly plan a third offensive against Ulanor. The first phase of Thane's plan called for the remaining Last Wall chapters to set aside a portion of their remaining power to reconstitute the Imperial Fist chapter. With the death of Kurland, the last son of Dorn, the Imperial Fists were now an extinct chapter. This was both a travesty and a tragedy that needed to be addressed immediately, as the original chapter descended from Rogel Dorn could not be allowed to remain extinct. Within just a short span of time, 1,000 Battle Brothers had been gathered from every Scions of Dorn chapter and stood proudly in their battle blade that was freshly repainted in their yellow livery. Maximus Fane stood as the new chapter master. In truth, the destruction of the Imperial Fists on Ardamantua was deemed necessary to keep from the citizens of Terra, who were now rejoicing at seeing the stalwart defenders of Terra marching in parade at full strength. Thane intended to repeat Kurland's original strategy and devised a plan to capture other Orc Psychers for creating another reverse war. Lord Commander Militant Vero and Lord High Admiral Lansung were pretty much intimidating into contributing to this strategy. Unlike the previous campaigns launched at the Greenskins on Ulanor though, Thane opted to utilize a more unconventional tactic. Utilizing the advanced technology of the Mechanicus, the Chapter Master had the Imperial Strike Force redirect multiple asteroids and send them to collide with Ulanor. With the Orcs distracted by the devastating assault of the asteroids colliding with their planet, knocking out orbital and ground defenses, the bulk of the Imperials utilized a modified asteroid, dubbed 43 Tusa, and made a controlled landing upon the Orc planet. 
the attack group was comprised of the newly reconstituted Imperial Fist chapter and the Sisters of Silence, led by Master Fane himself. Another group was comprised of Mechanicus units led by Magos Gurg Zoku, while a third attack group was comprised of the remaining Last Wall chapters led by High Marshal Bowman. Having annihilated the majority of the orc settlements of Gorkogrod with the asteroid attack, this time the Imperial forces faced a more straightforward fight, though the battle was still a desperate struggle. The group led by Thane continued their drive on the beast's Gargant Palace, located in the center of the capital city. With three remaining orc psychers held by the Imperial Fists, they utilized one of them to annihilate the remaining orc defenders around the proximity of the complex. Another one of these was lost during a vicious firefight. Meanwhile, in orbit, the Imperial fleet sustained heavy losses, while the phalanx itself was forced to defend itself from boarding orcs. Though exhausted and bloody, Fane's attack group finally managed to penetrate the orc palace and fight their way to the throne room. Here, they once again came across the six thrones made for the so-called Prime Orcs. During the final epic battle, the Imperial force was confronted by one of these truly nightmarish monsters, whom they speculated to be the Beast of Beasts. After a hard-fought and desperate bloody conflict, the Sisters of Silence, led by Knight Abyssal Cavalanera Brasanas, conducted a final ritual with the remaining Orc Psyker and using their innate psychic null effect, they created a very powerful anti-war effect. The chain reaction of this caused the head of the Beast of Beasts to explode spectacularly, just before it could slay Chapter Master Thane. In the aftermath of the Imperial victory, the Beast's war finally collapsed, though thousands of Imperial star systems remained under the threat of the remaining Greenskins. The newly installed Lord Commander of the Imperium, Maximus Fane, decreed that the Imperium would raise as many new chapters as there was Jainseed in the Great Vaults of Terra. All the chapters of the Astartes were ordered to release a portion of their veterans to provide the initial basis for this founding, the greatest since the first founding. Gene tithing would become doubled for the next century to replenish the vaults. The Lord Commander also decreed that the Imperial Fist would no longer garrison the throne world of Terra, as they would become a crusading chapter to wade the beleaguered worlds of the Imperium to free them from alien tyranny and speed up their reconstruction. Knowing that his labors would be long and that he might never see Terra again, Thane invested Draken Vangarich as the new Lord Protector of the Imperium to be his own personal representative and act as his voice and his hand. Following the departure of the Imperial Fists from Terra, Vangarich was left to oversee the reconstruction efforts of the Imperium. But over the course of the War of the Beast, Vangarich had grown contemptuous of the political machinations and squabbling of the fractitious High Lords. But he did remain committed at first, to do his best to work with them in the rebuilding of the Shattered Imperium. However, Fane had warned Vangarich of Fabricator General Kubik and his own self-interest. Eventually, Vangarich discovered the full extent of the Fabricator General's shenanigans. The head of the Adeptus Mechanicus had utilized matter displacement technology plundered from the Greenskin's attack moons to secretly teleport the orc capital city of Ulanor, Gorkogrod, aboard the immense Mechanicus vessel Ark Majesty, instead of carrying out the exterminatus order that Master Fane had demanded. The Grand Master of Assassins understood that the official Assassinorum was a tool to be used to check the follies of Empire. He knew what it could do and what an abuse of power it could be to use as the Emperor intended it to be used. That is why he avoided acting until now. Striking swiftly, Vangarich ordered the death of the High Twelve, which was carried out swiftly in a single solar day. Only Vinand, the joint inquisitorial representative, was spared, because Vangarich harbored romantic feelings towards the woman. This lamentable event came to be known as the Beheading. 
Vangarich then moved swiftly to install new High Lords who acted as puppets of his own. Vangarich would go on to govern the Imperium for almost a century. Though he eventually became a tyrant, he was an effective one, and oversaw the reconstruction and refortification of Terra and the Imperium, the rebuilding of Imperial military, as well as the fourth founding of the Adeptus Astartes. However, after nearly 80 years of rule, the Lord Protector had begun to display a variety of troubling behaviors and uncontrolled paranoia. But remember kids, it's not paranoia if they're really out to get you. Receiving troubling reports from abroad about the Lord Protector's growing instability, Maximus Vein decided that the Imperial Fist should return to Terra to remove this troublesome tyrant. When their crusade fleet finally arrived back on Terra, 400 space marines were dispatched to the capital world's surface. A company each from the two of the newly founded chapters, the Halo Brethren and the Sable Swords, as well as 200 Imperial Fists from the 1st, 4th and 5th companies. The commander of the Strike Force, Kublicus Amar, chapter master of the Sable Swords, was assassinated by a Vindicari assassin. Seeing no other choice, the remaining Space Marines commenced the attack nevertheless. Assailed by hundreds of assassins, the Space Marines lost half their number securing the Imperial Palace. Confronting the Inquisitorial representative, the now elderly Venand, she convinced Fane of her own loyalty, and gave the chapter master the necessary information in order to stop the mad tyrant Vangarich. The Grand Master of Assassins had taken refuge in the Eversor Temple at Terra's North Pole like any proper Bond villain. Moving the retribution force there at once, the Astartes proceeded with their attack. Within the temple, the Space Marines were attacked, once again, by over 100 Eversor assassins. Only Maximus Fane managed to survive, to reach the Grand Master and finally deliver the Emperor's Judgment. In the aftermath of Vangarich's fall, because we can never have nice things, the Imperium would proceed to descend into a period of political anarchy. This unfortunate situation would last for almost two decades, until Chapter Master Agnathio of the Ultramarines gathered the support of his fellow Chapter Masters from all across the galaxy. Then a combined force of over 50 Space Marine Chapters descended upon Terra for the first time since the Horus Heresy. The factions, unable to withstand the military might of the equivalent of an entire Space Marine Legion from the old days, quickly fell into line, and a new council of High Lords of Terra were quickly elected, and order finally brought back to the Imperium. In the wake of these events, the Inquisition formed the Ordo Xenos and the Ordo Malleus, so they could combat threats both Xenos and demonic in nature while the Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes was granted a position as one of the High Lords of Terra. In a final act, the esteemed position of Lord Commander of the Imperium was abolished. It would not be reconstituted for nine millennia, until the resurrection of the greatest of the Primarchs, Robut Gilliman. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the storyline and the campaigns known as the War of the Beast for today. To be honest, even though I did read the novellas back when they first came out, I never really got to read the last one, so this conclusion of the story was new for me as well. What are your thoughts on the finale of this story? Did it match your expectations? Did you find it ridiculous? Did you wish instead for a fourth invasion of Ulanor? Feel free to share any thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all an awesome day. May Gork and Mork guide you.